Hey everybody, welcome back to Linux Cast. I'm your host, Matthew Weber. I'm joined by Tyler Kelly. How you doing? Hey, doing good. Uh, we had a really good discussion before the show. Luckily, we're recording that. We'll have to release that as like an extra or something to Patreon because that was fun. Um, oh, for sure. And then, of course, I'm getting messages now. So, that's awesome. Uh, stop messaging me, Google and Facebook. I don't give a shit. <laughs> I gotta mute this tab so it stops that. I don't. I no longer care. Uh, anyway, th this is what you get when you record uh, a podcast. Uh, so, this is the Linux cast. We talk about Linux things because Linux is right in the title. It'd be weird if we talked about Windows. We should definitely do that. Just like an April Fool's joke next year. We'll just, instead of doing the Linux cast, we'll talk about Windows for the whole episode. And we'll make it sound like we really care about it and it's awesome. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll start making fun of all the Linux nerds. And, <laughs> and we won't mention a single problem that exists in Windows because there are none. Yeah, because Microsoft is awesome. Oh, that's definitely going to happen. All right. Uh, so what have you been doing in Linux this week? Um. Well, I have been dealing with some... Uh, graphics card issues and from what i can tell it's mainly due to the fact that i have an msi 5700 xt so like there's this known issue with 5700 xts well they were where they have a green screen crash and so like for 20 seconds your entire screen will turn green and then the computer will reboot now, on Windows, there is a specific version of uh, like a, the Radeon software and driver that you install, and it will never happen. But on Linux, what I found is when I use the Zen kernel and um, uh, use the latest drivers like Mesa drivers and all that on, on Arch, no problem. It will happen once a month maybe twice and it's always like um when the computer has just woken up from like a sleep so it's not a big deal on elementary os i do not know why but it it was happening every day if not every other day well elementary os uses uh the last lts right from ubuntu that's probably yeah. why it's probably the because of the old kernel yeah and i also think that their drivers might be a little bit older um cuz as far as i know when it comes to like drivers for the 5700 XT um even on windows the 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 better the drivers are the less it's an issue so it might be something there but uh, i don't know i think elementary os has the same sort of up to date drivers i would assume but could be pretty wrong there. I mean, it's weird. It, it's weird because the AMD stuff all comes baked in the kernel. So, mm -hmm. um, if, if it's an older kernel, you're not going to get the stuff for the newer hardware. But that that card has been around for ages. But that doesn't mean that there's not like bugs or whatever um, mm -hmm. that you're experiencing that haven't been worked out in the kernel. But because that was a fairly popular card, you'd think that it'd be something that would get fixed fairly. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I, I, the reason I did mention it's an MSI card is because from everything that I can read online, this bug is mainly due to uh, MSI cards. Like MSI cards are the ones that typically get them. And it seems to be like a quality assurance issue um, because one person was explaining it online that it very well could be that that one driver um, just particularly like it has a good way of dealing with um, whatever causes the issue on the card. Um, but I mentioned MSI because they just, if you've ever, you know, done a whole bunch with building computers and messing with a lot of components, because I've built a lot of family members computers over the years, um, MSI parts just in general have a higher rate of problems, at least in my experience. I couldn't tell you what graphics card I have in my computer, other than it's an RX 580. I don't know what brand oh. it is. Uh, no clue. Um, it might be like one of the. It was a cheap card, so I don't, I don't yeah. know. Uh, I, like I know, I know the processor, and I know the 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 motherboard and stuff because I built it. But it's just been so long, I don't remember. But yeah. I, I, does anybody really want to use like a? I mean, like I know a whole bunch of people have um, been using the like NVIDIA cards for Linux, but I've mm -hmm. always had so many problems with NVIDIA cards, screen tearing and stuff. So 
oddly enough that you say that, I've had more issues with screen tearing uh, to do with AMD, but that's only because, like, to me, I, I feel like a big part of that is um, my lack of knowledge when it comes to fixing those types of issues because a lot of the times when i was dealing like when i would deal with screen tearing on linux i was much more new um so i have a feeling because i i don't have any problems with screen tearings with an amd card anymore but i think it was probably i wasn't doing stuff right or like i know back in the day i would install like a um um like Icom or Compton and just do a whole bunch of stuff to it, not knowing what I was doing. So I have a, I feel, I have a feeling that's a big part of it, but I actually got a Quadro K4000 as my replacement to go in it now because eventually I'll, I'll get a new card because this one, this one, it's just, I, I like it and everything, but I could afford to get a new one when the prices come down. So right, I just got a yeah. hundred dollar card to slap in it. Now it can do everything I need it to fine. And I'll just have an extra backup graphics card after this. Yeah. And I could probably sell that one for insane loads of money, but Pro I'm probably. not going to do that. Probably. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to sell it to someone and have a whole bunch of problems with it and be my problem. Like, no. Nah. Yeah. The graphics card market now is just not suitable to actually upgrading for normal people. Mm -mm. All right, so what I've been doing is I've been playing around with uh, alternative video editors, and this week has been shot cut. And so it turns out that Kaden Lines actually fixed what was going wrong, but for the last three or four weeks or whatever, after an update, Kaden Live was just the crashiest crash thing ever. <laughs> and uh, you know, I, and it was always wait until I was like ninety percent way done with a video. And then it would crash. And mm -hmm. sometimes you'd get lucky and it would like restore and remember your position and stuff. Sometimes, you know, not. And you'd have to start over yeah. again. And I was just completely done with that. So I looked at Shotcut this week and um, I'm going to do a video on it t probably t tonight or tomorrow. But it's okay. Uh, it has some features that I really like. So like in Caden Live, when you do fade, it's fades in and fades out. It, it's just a, like a line or whatever. It doesn't tell you the duration of the, the fade. In Shotcut, it'll actually tell you this is this fade's 10 seconds long. So you can make your fades you know exactly equal. That's really cool. Uh, I also like it if you overlap like a, like a video. One, you, like you cut the video and then you overlap them. It will automatically yeah. do the whole fading thing. So it kind of looks like a transition fade. It's really, that's really nice. Um, I don't care for the interface like at all. It's uh, very clunky. Yeah. Uh, if anyone's looked at a picture of Shotcut, it's the UI is very, I don't know, old. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, it's not, it's not the old, it's not Audacity old. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, but it, it does look old. The, the worst part is that you can, after, so like I always, in everything I do, I always record the video and the audio separately. So I always record in, in Audacity separately. And, you know, I sync with a hand clamp, a hand clamp, a hand <laughs> clap, and, you know, get them all synced up. And then I go into, you know, Caden Live or whatever and sync the audio and stuff. And then in Caden Live, you can decouple the audio and then regroup the audio with the new stuff. So it's always synced up, right? In mm -hmm. Shotcut, you can't do that. You can't group audio and video. You can decouple them fine right because i always have that way i always have a backup I, I record the audio and stuff in obs but i also record it in audacity but i take the obs stuff out because it always picks up more stuff in the background yeah so uh, but you can't group anything in, in shotcut it's just completely impossible it's it's i probably have enjoyed Shotcut just fine. I mean, it worked fine. It was very stable. It had, I mean, I don't, I'm not any like fancy video editor, so it has, it had all the features that I need, mm -hmm. but that inability to go through and group things. So I actually had to go through when I had to cut out an um, I'd have to cut the video and had, then I had to go in through and cut the audio, <laughs> like two separate things. It like doubled the amount of time I was spending cutting things out. It's not, it was not good. So you recommend it's been. Go it's ahead. been so long. I'm sorry to cut you off. It's been so long since I've used Shotcut. So you're you're telling me they have it so you can definitely ungroup, 
a video mm -hmm. from the audio, but there is no functionality whatsoever to to regroup audio. I couldn't if if it's there and exists, I didn't find it. <laughs> so dumb. Um, and, and I did Google it. Now, granted, I was using DuckDuckGo, so it's possible that it's just I couldn't find it. But um, yeah, I couldn't. Like I said, as far as I'm, I'm, I know, is is that functionality doesn't exist, and it's that seems like a fairly basic functionality that yeah. everything you know should have, but it it doesn't. Um, and that's just an, I mean, it's something that if I had to use Shotcut, I could. You know, it, it's fine. Uh but I'm back. That out. seems to be everyone's endorsement of of Open Shot. It's it's fine, you know. Yeah. All right, so yeah, that's what I've been doing. I'm back on Caden Live now. You recommended Olive. Mm -hmm. I'll have to take a look at that. It's always the alpha, of, the alpha designation of it has always kind of scared me away. But uh, I don't know. For most people, it does that. I will like, get, give that a look. Hmm. I mean, I, I'm okay trying beta software out. Like I'll always try a beta software out. But Alpha always like, well, oh, that's going to be really buggy. You know? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into the contact information. If you want to get in contact with us, you can do so at the Linux Cast on Twitter. I'm at MTWB on Twitter. Tyler is one of those heathens that doesn't have Twitter because he's mm -hmm. just like that. Uh, you can subscribe to all of our audio feeds and all that kind of stuff at the LinuxCast.org. Right now, that just points you towards our Anchor.fm page. Uh, but sometime this week, I promise, finally promise, that we will have our own website. It's going to happen. It's on the list of things mm -hmm. to do. I just have to, you know, do it. Um, you can find, you can contact us at uh, via email at the linuxcast at gmail.com. I might actually get an actual, like, email for us, too, at, at the linuxcast.org. That'd be kind of cool. Uh, you can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. Uh, we have eight patrons now. There's no way I'm going to remember everybody's name because I don't have them written down in front of me. But thanks, everybody, for supporting us on Patreon. Uh, you can follow us on Facebook because I still have these things out of order. Facebook.com slash LinuxCast. You can, you can follow uh, Tyler on Odyssey at the official Zany. Uh, and you can follow him on uh, YouTube with the link in the video description. He he definitely deserves some more uh, followers to follow him. Thank you. And you can subscribe to us on YouTube. Daily YouTube content uh, at the YouTube.com slash LinuxCast. That mm -hmm. section needs to get smaller. <laughs> There's just too much shit there. We got to cut some of that stuff out. Uh, see, will... that, see, that's why I don't use Twitter. Just just to make that section and shorter. We, that's right, the only that, reason. That's the reason, right. Okay, good. <laughs> All right. So every every week, we uh, between the two of us, we pick out one news item each week to uh, link to. And this week is no different. So Tyler, why don't you tell us what you found for us this week? Well, um, my link is Coinex's website, coinex.com. Um, it is a exchange for LBC, and I have to recommend it because Bitrex is crud. They have given me no help in trying to you know, get just being able to use the exchange. Um, Coinex, on the other hand, it has been extremely simple to make an account, to get verified, to to transfer everything I transferred. Um, it, it's weird um, how you have to take your, your LBC and turn it into cash. So my strategy is I turn it from LBC into Bitcoin and I don't just withdraw my Bitcoin. Uh, and then, cause I have a shame on me, but I have a Coinbase account. That's where I get like transferred to my bank. Um, because as far as I know, just as far as I know, I don't think you can withdraw like money and stuff from Coinex. I think they only do crypto. But um, um, if I try to withdraw Bitcoin from Coinex, there is like a $100 withdrawal fee. And my way of getting around that is I just take the Bitcoin that I transferred from LBC, turn that into Bitcoin Cash, and there is a $0 whatsoever withdrawal fee from there. And so just take my Bitcoin Cash, and then you use Coinbase to just take it and turn it in cash and send it on to my bank account. And I have to be honest, out of all the exchanges that I found, it's pretty simple to use. And they actually do have like dedicated, like little tutorials on there to walk you through how to use stuff. If you're a complete noob like me. So it's definitely a good crypto exchange have to say it's great. And so if you're on Odyssey or anything like that, and you're 
wanting to know that you can at the very least turn your LBC into cash and how to do it, I think Coinex, Coinex is the best place to go for it. Okay, so this is the question I have to ask, and it's something that I've never been able to find the answer to. Because mm -hmm. I'm a complete cryptocurrency noob. I think most of it's nonsense. Um, that's just my opinion. <laughs> like I'm mm -hmm. sure, I'm sure everybody else is out there is getting we we're rich. They're floating around, throwing around fake coins or whatever. But I'm I'm here like oh this is nonsense. Um, yeah. How much is an LBC and Odyssey worth like in real money? Um, one LBC right now or the last time I checked, it was trading for about 19 cents. But as of like four days ago, it was trading for like a quarter. So it's worth about a quarter. But it's not it's not extremely valuable. But I mean, also, if you use LBC like as a creator, you do get rewarded for each view similar to YouTube. But as far as uh, I'm somebody who doesn't make anything off of YouTube. So to be making money off of LBC and to be able to, I'm going to be able to pay my next month bills with what I've made off of um, li uh, Odyssey and library. So I think it's awesome. That's cool. Um, that you definitely made more money than I have on Odyssey. I've made, so I've got 33 LBC total. <laughs> so that's not very much. Um, no, I don't get tips there. I don't know what I can do to get tips, but I don't, I, 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 it's mostly because I don't interact on Odyssey like at all. I, it's uh, just I have my content transferred over there, but that's the end of my interaction with it. Um, so I don't know how I've done it, but I, I or I don't think I've done anything. But I don't, I don't, I don't know why. But my content for for some reason does way better on Odyssey. And like I get, I have one video that got like 37 views on YouTube and then on Odyssey, it got over a thousand. Mm -hmm. So yeah, see for me, I'm exactly the other way around. I always get all my views on YouTube and I, I think my most viewed uh, video on Odyssey is like 86 views or something. And that's like the, oh, really? the most, um, like I could probably actually even go see, I, <laughs> like it's, it's, it's some ridiculously small number. Um, so my most viewed yeah. video of all time, uh, has 72 views. Yeah. Yeah. We are polar opposites. <laughs> yeah. All right. So my, mo my most viewed, I think on YouTube, you have a, a, a video that's also has more views than my top because my top one has like 4,400 views. Um, and that's like my, my biggest one. So, uh -huh. um, you know, no, my my biggest video on YouTube, I think it's got like 3,000 views or close to it. All right. Yeah. I don't know. Odyssey is still a complete mystery to me. I think part of the reason is because I just don't take it seriously. Right. So it's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. My, uh, my news item this week is, um, I don't remember. Uh, I'm going to have to actually look, look at this. I, oh, it's the Microsoft thing. So if you use mm -hmm. WSL... Uh, for the longest time, mostly what you could do with WSL is just terminal-based stuff, right? I mean, that's that's basically the way it's been from the beginning of WSL to uh, now. Uh, in, like, la late last year, or maybe early last year, they went through, there was, like, a hack or whatever you can get working so that you could actually install a desktop environment and GUI applications and stuff. But that was, it was, and I did it. I, it was not great. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was definitely hacky, uh, but now uh, apparently official Linux GUI support is coming to Windows 10 and, and WSL. So if you're a, a developer and you're forced to use the devil that is Windows, and but you want to be able to use to do uh, Linux development on your Windows computer, uh, GUI applications are now coming there. I'm not sure in terms of like existing applications. I'm not sure how the why like why. But like if you're developing GUI applications for Linux, but you don't want to have to actually have a Linux install, this would be actually really cool. Um, I, I think that WSL has been way more successful and popular than I ever thought it was going to be. I thought that, like, I mean, if you're going to develop for Linux, just use Linux. That was my <laughs> argument when this first came out. But I'm positive that um more people use it than what i thought did because i mean it seems to be very popular amongst a lot of people so 
Um, why that is, I'm not. I still can't get my head around it. But <laughs> this seems to be the a natural evolution to this becoming actually pretty good and pretty easy to use. Yeah, I see for I see for like at home people, um, you know, like small, you know, solo devs when they're trying to, you know, like let's say you're making a game or a program to to at least not have to have a dedicated like machine to like, you know, test your Linux builds on or, you know, have to like do something weird like where you dual boot and you have to like switch between them and stuff like that. Like I, or or even I mean you can't really especially if you're going to make a game, but even a program trying to test performance and everything in a virtual like machine or a virtual environment is pretty difficult. So I see this being beneficial to those, but you know, in the case that you are going to be deploying your build on everything, including Linux, why aren't you developing on Linux in the first place? But, um, for one, I, uh, before I forget, I'm going to go ahead and say, I forgive you for sending me a Verge link. <laughs> I clicked on the Verge and I was like, oh, this is the one site where they can get their ads through. I don't know why, but cute browser on the Verge, their ads just sneak in <laughs> past the ad block. Yeah, I know I've reported a lot of ads to Ublock Origin on the Verge too, but it's my favorite tech news site that just covers like general news. It's I think it's mostly nostalgia because I've been following them since all the guys were in, at Engadget. So, uh -huh, um, yeah, I guess it's mostly nostalgia. There was a time period there where they got really culturally culture culturey, where they <laughs> they kind of divested themselves of gadgets and stuff and started talking about I don't know, like American culture, and it was really weird. So I stopped following them. Yeah, but, you know, it's whatever. Um, yeah, I mean, they're a good service. It's just every time I go there, I'm like, how do you guys always sneak your ads through to me? I, I shouldn't be seeing these. But um, like, I mean, Windows 10 in general, like the thing that that I don't really understand is there are so many people out there that talk about how the Linux kernel's already bloated. And the people that talk about that, like how, how do those people not spend their time talking about the fact that Windows 10 also comes with the Linux kernel in it? Like it's already, Windows 10 is already bloated, but now it's got the Linux kernel right, in so it too. So now it has like, two kernels. We have like two Linux kernels shipped on this. <laughs> <laughs> Linux within Linux sounds like a good idea. Um, mm. Yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, so that's the WSL thing. I don't know. I, I, like when I first... Uh, it was like when I first started the YouTube channel that I went through and tried WSL and did that hacky thing. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'm interested enough in it now to go through and install Windows again just so I can try WSL. So uh, if you uh, if you use WSL and you have a good user reason to use it, leave a comment in the comment section below because I'm definitely interested to find somebody who goes through and use it. Because I'm sure, like I said, it's way more popular than I ever thought it was going to be. So, all right. Moving on to the main topic. This is my topic for the week. Now, I've talked a lot about Firefox on the channel, and a lot of the Linux like podcasts or whatever talk about Mozilla and Firefox quite a lot. But the question I have is, can Firefox be relevant again? And I think that I'm going to be in a lot of trouble with this, pot with this uh, question because the word relevant is definitely going to be something that's very subjective, right? So... Uh, it depends on what you, my, my answer to my own question is depends on what you, you know, you mean by relevant, but what do you think? Can, can Firefox be a uh, Firefox of the past again? Um, I honestly don't know. Cause the, the thing about Firefox is it never, a lot of the people will talk about Firefox and will say, hey, it just needs, like, really everyone, the only gripe that people used to have with Firefox is it didn't have the market share that it should have. It should have been bigger. I mean, it, it it's always been a very good competitor, but it's just never had the market share around it. But the same people, like, five years ago that were talking about that, because of Microsoft or Microsoft, what am I talking about? Mozilla's sort of um, attitude here recently are the same ones like leaving it. Like if you're going to complain about it not having market share and then leave it because they're making decisions that you don't agree with, I, I, I don't really understand that. But also at the same time, 
I think that Mozilla could easily do a 180 and start really pleasing the community. Do I think it'll happen? Maybe. Maybe. Mm. I think it's a big maybe. Yeah. So, the reason why I brought up the word relevant when I first t- when we started talking about this was, I think the idea of them having market share comparing to like Google Chrome is a pipe dream is never going to happen. Um, if market share is what Firefox cares about and what people who care about Firefox care about, it's just never going to happen. It's the same reason why when people say, can Linux go mainstream? I was like, no, of course not. It's never it going to have 90% market share, at least not in our lives times. It's not going to happen. Uh, but if you pare down your expectations just a little bit, and ask the real question is can can Firefox survive and be uh, feasible to continue to be maintained? Like people still use it, and there's still enough uh, interest in it that it has developers who can continue to develop it. My answer to that is yes, of course it can. Uh, Linux survives with two or three percent market share. Firefox can too. What what Mozilla needs is less Mozilla <laughs> in the yeah. in, in in the equation. They need to stop running Mozilla like it's a gigantic corporation. Like I their CEO or whatever earns like three or four million dollars a year. Mm-hmm. Uh, and like their only income source, the only source of income they have is four hundred million dollars they get from Google every like decade. And mm-hmm. they eat through that by hiring four hundred people to work on one product, basically one product. Uh because mm-hmm. I mean nobody I mean, Mozilla has other products, but nobody knows what they are, and nobody, nobody uses, uses them, them right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so they they hire four hundred people or whatever to. I, I mean, I'm pulling these numbers out of my ass. So I'm assuming I I read somewhere that the exact number I think is like three hundred fifty people or something, and they they they've pared that down over the years, and they pay their their executive teams millions of dollars a year. So they're mm-hmm. running this browser that ha- makes no money. I mean, it makes no money. They're paying all these people to develop one software product. And it's the dumbest organization in the history of organizations. It, Google's stupid enough to pay them $400 million. <laughs> that money should last them from here till 2100. Mm-hmm. You know, because it doesn't take 300 people to develop a browser. I mean, I'm sorry. I, I'm, uh, I, I'm coming across like I, I'm <laughs> bemoaning these the fact that these people have jobs, right? And like I'm yeah. happy that the people at Mozilla have jobs. I'm sure they're all wonderful people, but they need to get jobs elsewhere <laughs> because yeah. it, does, it doesn't take that many people to run a browser. It just doesn't. I mean, I'd be interesting to, interested to know how many people work on Google Chrome because, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, it maybe maybe it's 400 people, but Google has a ton of money. Uh, Google Chrome makes money, you know, it, mm-hmm. it, uh, it also has users, right? I mean, in terms of like real millions and millions and millions, billions of users. Mm-hmm. So it's just, it, well, they're playing ball, like the trying to compare the two. It's like, I mean, Google is playing a whole different game. Like they can, th- they can afford to throw away millions of dollars, <clears throat> on devs to develop stuff like they just can't they they have the money mozilla on the other hand 400 million dollars i mean you just don't you just don't need it and firefox is a good product now and if they were to 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 be honest if they would stop playing the corporate game of you know trying to um increase people like using firefox by making decisions and that get, you know, public, like what they're trying to do is essentially be a really good corporation. So people like them, they make public decisions that, that attract people. If they would stop trying to play that ball game and just save money and just make a focus on just making a good browser, do your own thing, be a quiet, quiet organization, do your own thing. Mm-hmm. It'd be fine. It, it I, I think a lot of people would instantly like, come back to Firefox, people who have left just because of that decision. Like, yeah, I agree. I, I, I mean, I'm just, cause you're right. They're, 
they do seem to run their blog or whatever in their social media accounts as if they're trying to make as big a splash as possible to get attention. And mm-hmm. instead of saying, hey, you want to, here's a browser, it's almost as good as Google Chrome, but it doesn't sell all of your information to everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, use our browser. It's really good. That's how that's that's what they should be doing. Instead, they're writing blog posts and social media posts to make as big a splash in every political situation as possible. Uh, you know, and and that's not the that just makes people think that your browser is terrible, so you have to do these other things in order to get attention. Exactly, and see, that's my whole point. Is when you said it there, you're like your Firefox isn't as good as Chrome. If I think everybody here would agree, even if it didn't happen overnight, but if if Mozilla would stop focusing on trying to make these big splashes, like immediately people would start to notice, hey, they're they're not being as active on social media because they're spending the proper time and effort to make a good browser. And eventually people will wait for it to be as good or even better than Chrome. Happily wait. As long as your company is not, or organization is not wasting money trying to make a big splash on social media, trying to get involved in a whole bunch of other crap that you don't, you're a browser. Nobody needs your, you know, public displays of what you care about. Like, just focus on making a good browser. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. Like, I feel like Google, like as a parent company, will do more of what Mozilla is trying to do, um, like on their own brand, where Chrome, it's just marketed as a browser. A browser, yeah. (laughs) I think we got a little bit away from the question, but Mm -hmm. Firefox, I I think, like I said, like I said before, it it has a Mozilla problem. It doesn't have a Firefox problem. If, If... the best open source, I, I mean, for example, I mean, there are not a lot of examples of mainstream open source projects out there, but one really good example is OBS. I mean, we're using it right now, right? It's mainstream enough that almost everybody who wants to go through and stream on the internet uses it, right? Mm-hmm. And they're an open. It's open source software. I mean, it's a hundred percent open source under I don't know what license, but it's open source, right? And it's very popular. It's free to use. It's free as in freedom as well. And I would challenge anyone that's just like a normie to tell me who the the uh, CEO or whatever, I mean, even if they have a CEO, I don't even know, yeah. of OBS is. I bet you nobody knows. I mean, I'm, I'm <laughs> sure that I said that the other day about something else and somebody was like, oh, I know what it is. Like, well, <laughs> so I can't say nobody knows, but I bet you the vast majority of people have no clue who the executive board of OBS is, if there even is one. Yeah, I um, have no idea. Because you want to know what? OBS is, is just focusing on making OBS. <laughs> they don't give mm-hmm. a crap about politics. They don't give a crap about, you know... I, Their brand image, uh, like... Yeah. OBS <laughs> makes money by bringing in corporate sponsors, but you'd never know it. Right? Mm-hmm. So, so they have the same uh, monetary strategy as Firefox... But those brands aren't getting uh, any recognition for being brand sponsors. Like, I couldn't even tell you who they are. Like, I know, like, I'm, I'm pretty sure, like, Microsoft and Oracle and Google, they all support OBS to some degree. Because um, like it's kind of like the Free Software Foundation. But the, when Firefox gets their cash handout from Google, everybody knows because G- Firefox jumps up and down. It's like, hey, look at this. We got all this money. It's really mm-hmm. cool here. Here, let's... Uh, let's um. Hey, pay our CEO a million more dollars a year. Let's just going to be fantastic. We got all this money. It's going to be perfectly fine. Our browser's great. I mean, nobody loses it, but who cares? We got all this money. It's fantastic. We're jumping around in mattresses of money. It's, it, I mean, I mean, just the comparison between the two companies. I mean, obviously they're making two different types of software and one's really popular and one's not, but I have a feeling that Firefox would actually be more, more popular it'd be less controversial it would be uh, more financially sound if they just backed i'm not even saying get rid of the google money i mean like by yeah. all means sucker google out of as much money as you possibly can just keep that money keep mm-hmm. rolling but then invest it in making the best damn browser you can and get mm-hmm. away from doing everything that mozilla seems to be happy to continue to do i like so um to 
to answer the question of can uh, Firefox be relevant again, I think the simple and short answer is yes, as relevant as it was before, if Mozilla is willing to stop doing what they're doing now to try and get attention and they could just post one blog article and be like, hey, so we're going to stop what are doing, what we're doing. We're going to focus on our finances and focus on um, bringing costs down and making sure that the browser only gets better and it's our only focus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're just too. I mean, even if you ignore the political stuff that they do. They seem to be too focused on things that are outside the browser. Um, and, and a lot of them seem to be like mad schemes to make money. So the, the latest example is this VPN that they're doing that mm-hmm. nobody's going to use. I mean, nobody's going to use a VPN made by, by, by Mozilla because Mozilla's not actually making a VPN. If Mozilla was actually making a VPN, that's something that quite a few people would be interested in. But basically what they've done is taken a third-party service and slapped their name on it. Yep. Uh, mm-hmm. And at which case, just go use that service. <laughs> You know I mean? Yeah. Uh, there's no reason to, I mean, it's not as if Mozilla's going to get all this money because they're going to have to give the vast majority of that money to that company. So, I mean, mm-hmm. at, at one point they were putting ads on the, the new tab page. That was another scheme and it pissed everybody off. You know, mm-hmm. they, they keep coming up with these alternative kind of uh, revenue ink, you know, revenue stream things to try to make money to get away from the Google thing. And none of them work. And yeah. The reason why they're so worried about having to figure out how to make money is because they employ too many people and they pay mm-hmm. their executive. I mean, even if you're going to employ that many people, which is fine, I don't think that they necessarily need that many people to do a browser, especially a browser that mm-hmm. makes, again, no money. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, you know, e- even, even if they were going to empl- employ that many people, they don't need to. Imp- to spend that much money on their executive team because they're not a big corporation. I mean, there are much bigger corporations out there that actually make a lot of money that don't pay their executive team that much money. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I mean that's just, that's a true fact. <laughs> so it's, it, it's just, it's, it's every time their, their uh, accountability thing comes out and it tells how much money they've been spending on their executive team it just blows my mind and i I understand that i've kind of gotten focused on the money aspect but i think that that's the the biggest problem i have with with mozilla itself is that they don't know know how to spend money that that, like i said that 400 million dollars should last them for a long time but more they just put it in the wrong places they're they're paying their executive teams and then they're not it doesn't feel like they're investing in the the browser itself. I'm, I'm, I'm sure they are, but for me, the experience of using Firefox in the last year or two has gotten worse. It's gotten mm-hmm. slower. It's gotten buggier. It's gotten, it's, it's almost as bad of a memory hog now as it was a few years ago. They had fixed it when like Firefox 70 came out. They like fixed the memory leak that had been there for, for, 10 years and they fixed it and now it's it feels like it's back because <laughs> because every tab now takes like up like a gigabyte i did a screenshot in a video the other day and i was like using nine gigabytes of my available ram and somebody commented alone, like are you using nine gigabytes of ram what are you doing i was like oh i have firefox open and that's the reason why <laughs> like, like like it's it's the dumbest thing it's not as if like i have like 30 tabs open like i have five six seven tabs open that's all i have it's you know, mm-hmm. yeah. and I bet you if I look right now, I'm probably using six or seven gigabytes of RAM, just Firefox. Yeah. Uh, OBS doesn't even take that much RAM. <laughs> it's so dumb. Yeah, you're recording video and audio. Come on. I mean, it's just, it, it, I mean, uh, make a good browser, people. I'm. <laughs> well, I think you hit you hit the nail on the head with they, they're the way they spend money is completely the problem because they're in this sort of weird paradox where they're making $400 million. And that's essentially almost all, if not all of their income, like through the year. So they're horrified that they're going to lose it. So they try and have all these money making schemes where they can match the revenue that they're getting from Google, which doesn't work. And it only serves to tick off and make users that did use it leave. So if they stop being so worried about losing Google and would just 
learn how to spend the money they get from Google from now on and make it last for years. Yeah. Problem I mean, solved. There's nothing wrong with having a, a backup plan to when that movie, that money goes away. Cause I mean, eventually Google's going to say, you want to run, we no longer care about not being evil. We're not going to give you this free money anymore. They're going to eventually say that. So there's not anything wrong with saying, you know what, you know, we're having a plan to do this, but the, the, the plan is to be user supported. I mean, every other open source software, you know, that's been successful out there has ha knows that the best way to get funding is through their users. I mean, mm -hmm. if you make a good product, people are going to give you money. Now, are you going to make $400 million? Probably not. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe, but pro I mean, probably not, but you're going to make something like have a big gigantic donate button on the front page of Mozilla.com. You're going to make some cash as long as you've gone through and made a good product. I mean, mm -hmm. people, I mean, people are, subs there are eight people out there right now that are giving me money for doing a YouTube channel. That's horrible. <laughs> there are people that tip me on Odyssey. Right? And I'm telling you, like, I'm like, my videos are not great. They're, they're, good in my opinion but uh, like well, I, i'm not even gonna say mine i know mine aren't good so, so like i like i hey, know mine, i watch yours your videos are good okay like, like my my point is like if, if there are eight people out there that will give me money there are definitely 80 people out there that give mozilla money mm -hmm. you know so so it's it's just i i don't understand this, this this isn't a hard problem to solve i mean like I said, yes, maybe, maybe you're not going to make $400 million to, you know, uh, offset that Google money. Maybe you won't, you know, that, and, and maybe when that, that Google money goes away and you're only bringing in a hundred million dollars, maybe God for, you know, maybe you have to fire some people. Maybe you don't have to pay your CEO $3.5 million or whatever it is, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> the, the, the jobs lost will obviously be a horrible, horrible thing. It always is. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But it'll be money that you actually earn, and it's not a scheme. It's not. It's not some kind of like a Ponzi scheme or something that you're, you've. Uh, it seems so shady, you know. It's, it's really. Well, I think the sort of like ironic thing about it is they're not getting as much money as they could at all through donations solely because of these money making schemes that drive people away, yep. like. People that people s still use Firefox and just deal with these, the crap that they push out to try and make money. Mm -hmm. And the only reason those people aren't donating, it's because of the money making schemes. As soon as they stop that and change their attitude, I feel like those people would be much. I'm I'm one of those people. Like I don't really use Firefox at all solely because they make those decisions and their browser needs, it needs more focus. That's it. Yeah. It needs more focus. So. And it needs to be better. I mean, it just, it does. It needs to be better. Get, fix the problems, create a good project, get, create a good product. And people will just give you money. <laughs> I mean, yeah. they literally just <laughs> have some money. I mean, it's, it's not, it's, this is not a hard problem. I mean, maybe we're oversimplifying it, but uh, like I said, people give m money to patreon they give money through paypal all the times to projects that aren't even anywhere close to being as good or as essential as firefox so mm -hmm. firefox could obviously do this i mean it's it, it's just it just blows my mind that they don't all right so uh, that was a <laughs> very passionate discussion about that all right yes so, it was <laughs> uh let's go ahead and jump into the apps of the week real quick uh tyler what what is your app of the week this year, this, this year i'm going to butcher this name but Alohomora, I believe is how you're supposed to say it. It's Alohomora. Uh, Alohomora. It's okay. from Harry Potter, bro. Oh, okay. <laughs> I should have probably known that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm a Harry Potter fan. I got the Harry Potter stuff behind yeah. me. Yeah, I got that. And as somebody who has all of the books in their house and seen all the movies, read all the books, I should have known that. <laughs> well, I mean, their picture is a wizard, so I'm just... <laughs> Oh, oh gosh. Well, um, it is a fantastic password manager. It's really good. Um, you can get it on, you know, other distributions of Linux, but it's, you know, it comes with the, or comes in the uh, elementary OS app store. And I believe it's one of their like featured apps. Uh, if it wasn't this week, I think it was last week, but um, it, I really liked it. It was super simple to use, not complicated, encrypted, and I just, 
overall, I found it to be very easy to use and like a password manager should be just just easy. Um, the one thing that I will say is, is apparently they are working on a feature to be able to like easily back up all of your passwords and transfer them between computers. Um, but right now that hasn't been implemented. So that is one thing to keep in mind. Okay. Yeah. I don't think that this would probably get me to switch away from Bitwarden, but it looks cool. Um, obviously I like the name, so. Um, yeah. If you already use something like Bit Bitwarden's a, a really good service. So, and, and product in general. So I don't, I'm not necessarily saying, Hey, you need to switch your password manager, but this is one. If you don't already use one, mm -hmm. I find extremely good because I normally use pass just the simple, like mm -hmm. pass for arch or I mean, anyway, Linux in general, but, um, on elementary OS, I gave it a try and I was like, Hey, this is, this is really nice. I like it. Mm -hmm. Um, cool. but it, there's a lot of features where if you use a password manager already, you're probably used to that aren't in there. Cause it's designed to be a very simple password manager. Okay. All right. So my pick for this week is called YT FZF. So basically this is a fuzzy finder for YouTube stuff where you can, you can download this in your terminal and uh, use it in the way that it's meant to be used. And it will go through and search for whatever you're searching for and then play it in MP MPV. Uh, so you can go through and just search for specific videos if you want. And then you can play that video. Or there's a way you can go through and like loop a whole bunch of... So like you can search, search for, I don't know, Ed Sheeran or something. And it would go through and play a selection of his videos just like as a shuffle thing. And you can also do it just as audio in the background. So um, it's really cool if if you play a lot of stuff on YouTube, but you don't want to actually, you know, use YouTube. You can go through and use this in your terminal, and it will go through and use. Now it does have some dependencies, like I said, it uses um, MPV. MPV. I always get that mixed up with MPD, but it's MPV to play the videos, and uh, obviously you have to have FZF installed as well. So. Uh, if you if you don't know what FCF is, FCF is is a fuzzy finder. Basically, what that means is it uh, it's kind of like auto suggest, like in a browser or something like that. Only it's you know in your terminal, so it's really cool. Um, obviously, it's free and open source, and uh, it has been it's uh, actively updated. So this isn't something that's been abandoned or anything. So it's really cool. Yeah, um, I I gave it a look. It seems really nice. It seems like a lot of people like who are probably used to just using YouTube DL, something they definitely need to check out. Like it's a, it's a pretty cool little thing. Uh, uh, I gave it a download. Yeah. So it's, I'm going to be using it. Yeah. It's really good. So, and, and yeah, I, I have it set up on a key binding. So um, I want to try to see if I can figure out how to get it to work in Rofi. That'd be really cool. Ooh. Um, But that's something that I'm going to have to, you know, figure out on my own. Um, anyway, so sounds like a future video to me. It, it does, but it's going to have to be something like I said, I, I'm not sure where I'd even, I don't know. Yeah. Like I'm thinking about it in the back of my mind. Like, how would I go about doing this? It's, I'm sure it's possible. Um, cause you can pretty much pipe anything into both your D menu. So, or anything into, yeah, whatever. Anyway, so that is it for us this time. Uh, our topic for, uh, next week is, uh, automatic updates on Linux, good or bad. That is our topic for next week. Uh, you make sure you follow us on Twitter, Facebook, all that stuff. Patreon.com slash Linuxcast. And uh, we'll see you next week. See ya.